In this tutorial, we'll look at and explore how speed is produced in the golf swing, but more from an anatomical observation, and what behaviours and what imbalances can we see that may also detect and certainly predict why players may be more powerful or less powerful or even more expansive, how we can really start to see gains and increases in areas such as clubhead speed through swing. So on display, we have a recent European Tour winner. This is with the driver, as you can most likely see through the animation. And in the right hand plot or graph window, we have the club head speed as well as the other segment speeds being produced. So playing this player through swing, we take them to their impact position, which is just here. So if you see in the bottom left hand corner of the graph window, you'll see a peak club head speed being produced to impact of 125 miles an hour. So very powerful European tour player. In fact, a recent winner on the European Tour. It's a very established player, very powerful player, and certainly considered by their peers as certainly one of the longer players on the European Tour. However, when really exploring this in more detail and connecting back to that anatomy, the possible imbalances they may have, how can we start to connect and add in those anatomical constraints, adaptations, and then really understand from a deeper physiological and actually using some physics, as we'll come on to as you move through this tutorial, perhaps why players maybe don't produce the club at speeds they should do when connecting back to areas in particular, such as ground reaction forces. So adding in this player's now kinematic sequence, as you'll see in the bottom right-hand window, let's just expand on those kinematic segment interaction values. And in particular, zoom in on the pelvis thorax interaction through the transition and downswing phase. So the blue plot in the expanded large left-hand window is the angular velocity of the pelvis and the silver plot is the angular velocity of the thorax or ribcage. So what's very evident and certainly very unusual and very established, very advanced players is you'll see the peak angular velocity of the thorax actually never increases or is above the peak angular velocity of the pelvis. So this is something we call a negative speed gain, where in essence the segment which comes after actually produces a lower peak rotational angular speed than the preceding segment. Just now looking at the swing intrinsic dynamic value. So if you look on the far left-hand column, the third row down, we have something called speed gain. So you'll see where it says pelvis to thorax, a negative value of 55.6 degrees per second, which really represents the thorax at its peak rotational speed and downswing is actually 55 degrees per second slower than the peak pelvis, which for a very established player is very unusual and certainly not advantageous in many ways, both when looking at pain, as we'll come on to at the end of this tutorial, as well as producing peak club head speed. And certainly whilst we're in this window, we can now start to connect back to ground reaction forces. So on the far right-hand column, the second row from the bottom, we have something called rate of pelvis elevation. This is a predictor, an estimation of really the vertical downforce the player is producing in the swing. And you'll see a pelvis rate of elevation value of 77.1 centimeters per second. That's one of the highest values I've certainly ever captured myself as far as how much downforce or vertical force a player is producing, which is really represented by the rate the pelvis elevates at as it moves through downswing into impact. So typically an accepted value amongst most established PGA and European tour players would be closer to say 30 to 40 centimeters per second. So exceptionally high ground reaction forces certainly in the vertical direction or plane. However, let's now start to connect this back to this player's anatomy. This is actually an example. This is not the actual play of question, more for privacy reasons around showing images of the player. But this is a very typical example of something called winging or really poor control through a person's scapula. So a very evident example here, actually in both scapula, but certainly very evident on the left-hand scapula, something called a winging scapula or an elevated protracted, essentially that winging scapula that really doesn't sit nicely on the back of the rib cage. And in some ways, what golf cultures actually refer to as disconnection, connection really anatomically when looking at how we move is really how well those scapula both rest on the ribcage with thorax and interact and move around that thorax and ribcage as the player moves through swing. So a very common example, and in many ways, the identical scapular ribcage interaction and position that the player of question in discussion in this tutorial really displayed as well. So when looking at why perhaps this player produces such huge vertical downforces, but perhaps proportionately 
then don't really then transmit into the relative higher clubhead speeds when looking at how much vertical downforce they produce, which is still the highest that I've ever seen in captured through 3D biomechanics. But proportionately, perhaps, that doesn't then migrate through into very high clubhead speeds. So we can actually explain why, invariably, you can often see some very, very good ground reaction force, but that doesn't always necessarily then convert to or migrate through into high or certainly expected clubhead speeds. And it really connects back to really anatomically how the human body really produces that very elastic explosive speed really connects back to really how well we move pressure or water through our system so something called really wave propagation so on this actual youtube tutorial we'll actually use now to really show this wave propagations are in essence how we move fluid and air through our system so really how well fluid or water is moved through our body really in essence connects back to then how we produce very distal or powerful speed such as peak hand and peak club head speed. Now when looking at water as a system, water within any system is non-compressible so we can't compress water so when we apply a compressive force to water it simply moves and gets displaced elsewhere. So when looking at really how we move water through our system you think humans are essentially 95 percent water so bone tissue etc is mainly all water based so when really looking at how we apply and produce maximum forces maximum speeds much of it connects back to our ability to move and compress water very explosively through our system and this can be shown by this wonderful example through this wave propagation video which we'll show now but this is how the humans move in our swings and we produce these wonderful vortexes, these wonderful ground reaction forces, how these waves propagate through our system to then produce peak distal hand speed. So this is an example of a wave propagation, as you see now being done more in real time, which in essence is how we produce movement through our system when we move and compress water from the proximal, say, ground reaction force values into those more distal hand speeds in swing. So relating this back to the player of question, so when you have someone that has very high, very explosive, almost expected within research and literature, ground reaction force values that connect back to high or certainly very, very powerful players, not always...